Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Cat Williams, literally, that interview on Club Shay Shay has broke the internet. He's literally been trending for the past 24 hours. Illuminati is trending, just so much stuff is trending because of Cat Williams. People are definitely feeling a way about the tea he's spilling, the things that he's saying. But like I always tell y'all, um, you know, when you're a truth teller, you know, the truth doesn't need any help. And just watching that two and a half hour interview, cause I've been, you know, watching it, pausing, watching, getting stuff done. But I ended up watching the whole thing. Like, there was just certain parts in that interview that gave me chills. You know, the things he was saying. And um, it also makes me feel better because for a long time, I would be like, well, damn, you know, why am I not on Revolt or doing things with Fox Soul or doing, you know, this and that. But I felt like it was better to just be independent, run my own shit, do my own research, you know what I'm saying? Be in my own little home studio. And I, I'm glad I did that because... If me going to platforms like Revolt and all this other stuff means a lack of pay, you know what I'm saying, you know, having a, you know, suck peen and do all this crazy shit, I don't want it. And I know recently, um, Funky Dineva, he left Fox Soul and he was saying a lot of it was due to like, you know, pay issues and things like that. So, you know, it looks like a lot of people now are going back the independent route. You know, we don't need all these conglomerates. You know, Lovely T LLC, that is my own brand. I don't need any cosigns from any major conglomerates, you know, any major entities. So um, that is a blessing, and that is because of you guys, and I really, really appreciate that. So um, Kat was going in. So we're going to go ahead. I want to play this clip for y'all, and then I'm going to show y'all just some of the things that um, people were responding to. So I want to play this when he's talking it's all, it's all. about the boule and stuff like that. So, um, so let's go ahead and watch this clip of Cat Williams. Give me just a second to pull this up here. Like he has literally everything trending today. What Hollywood is, what? is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? if what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with, they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources that we don't. But let us get on the line, boy boy and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, there's three other black guys on there. Woo, huh. So you wonder what they did to get there. <laughs> I told him no, what y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. All right, let me come back on the screen here. Give me just a second. 
So y'all heard what Cat Williams had to say. So he was keeping it real. And we all know, like, from his comedy specials, he was one of the few comedians that was talking about all of these Hollywood mansion parties and the things that go down. And, you know, again, it's so interesting now, like, how everybody's talking about things that Cat Williams and so many other truth tellers have been saying for years about Hollywood and the elites and things like that. You know, now that the money's funny and them checks aren't what, you know, them checks aren't checking, not everybody wants to talk about spirituality and, you know, blasting folks and all this other stuff. But remember a few years ago when Terry Crews came out, you know, people made fun of him and clowned him. And now we have Cat Williams basically co-signing the same thing about Harvey Weinstein. So I thought that was just really, really interesting. So um, Faze on Love, he went in on Faze on Love as well. So Faze on Love and Tiffany Haddish are both responding to Cat Williams. So I want y'all to listen to this part where he's talking about Tiffany Haddish. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, read to y'all what Tiffany Haddish had to say, child. All right, here we go. What are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. That uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made all lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any comedy club. He already had his deals with, like what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. That uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful- Okay. So this is what Tiffany Haddish had to say. She says, I'm not mad. I just wish he would get his facts right about me. Dang, I guess I will send him a reminder text. But are we sure that is Cat Williams? He looks a lot like Charleston White. <laughs> so that is what Tiffany Haddish had to say. But if you guys remember a few years ago when everybody was kind of going in on Monique and blacklisting Monique, Cat Williams was one of the few comedians that had Monique's back and was like, you know, y'all are ready to, you know, basically replace Monique with Tiffany Haddish. Somebody who's been in the game, who worked their way up. Not saying that Tiffany Haddish didn't, but Monique definitely had a longer resume and everybody was willing to turn their back on Monique. But Cat Williams had Monique's back. And it's very interesting now because we fast forward a few years and Tiffany Haddish is really going through it. She's had her second DWI. And then on top of that, she's looking at a felony charge. So she might want to simmer down a bit, okay? So that is what she had to say um, in response to what he was saying about her. And then Faison Love, he did an interview with um, Art of Dialogue. And so we're going to watch what Faison Love had to say about Cat Williams as well. So a lot of folks are, like, really upset. And obviously they're in their feelings because this interview has not gone viral. Like, it has over, like, 6 million views or something. The most overrated comedian of all time. Cat Williams. Definitely overrated. But as a comedian, though, you feel like you're overrated? Oh, yeah. Oh, way overrated. Way It's all mouth and no product. We're just successful movies. We're just successful TV show. He did the stand up, okay. He did 19 of those. You know? So, where's he great at? Greatness is consistent. Ooh, we're changing now. Give it to me, man. That's it. Yeah, ten drops. Don't you comedian is right? Who was you? All right. He created. He, he brought forth Tina Marie, the great Tina Marie. <laughs> what great has he done since Pippin, Pippin, whatever Pippin Chronicles? That stand up is just the stand up is just one part of the sh and he got stand up, TV, movies.
That's, That's a complete, complete artist. Y'all are in the comments going in. Y'all are like he's struggling to breathe. T, get him off my screen. <laughs> y'all are y'all are roasting face on love. Hold on, we, he got one more thing to say, child. Trying to create a character, you don't, you can't just be face on in every movie. Like you just gonna take your shirt off on every movie. Like why does it say that in your script? Man, let Big Worm live. Let him breathe, cat. Let me, let, let me breathe. Slowly, my now. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not fooling with Cat Williams. He literally woke up on the first and chose violence. Like I said, he wants all the smoke. He's trying to get it off his chest, and he's just, you know, he's keeping it real. And I'm glad that he's just calling out the foolishness. I didn't, you know, I always knew like the comedians kind of beefed and went back and forth. We've seen it over the years with like him and Kevin Hart, him and Michael Blackston, things like that. But comedy is very, very, you know, competitive. And um, the comedy of today is definitely not the comedy of yesteryear. And um, Cat has always just kept it real. And I think for a lot of people, it was really refreshing to just watch him just be very honest about not only his other comedians, um, but about the industry in general. So I really appreciated that. Now, one person who felt the way, if you guys don't know, um, Cat Williams did a joke on Trick Daddy. And so Trick Daddy decided to use this opportunity to go in on Cat Williams. So we're gonna watch um, a quick bit of his stand-up so that way y'all kind of get an idea what the hell Trick Daddy's crying about. And then we're gonna pull out our tiny violins, okay? And listen to what Trick Daddy got to say. So this was the joke that Cat Williams um, said about Trick Daddy. Beautiful people got beautiful shit. Ugly motherfuckers got it knowing. <laughs> Not now. You can make it, it don't matter what the fuck you look like. Trick Daddy is rich. And famous! Leave Trick Daddy alone, man. That's my boy. Look at you, now look at him. Bitch, you can do this! All right, I don't want to play the whole thing because of copyright. So now we're going to, um, you know, so Trick Daddy is taking this opportunity to go off. He's very upset. Um, he claims he's, like, you know, taking up for Ricky Smiley, but I think he's really mad about that, you know what I'm saying, that stand-up. So let me go ahead and pull, let me see if my audio posted it yet. If not, I have it on my screen somewhere. Okay, hold up, where is it at? Okay, there we go. So, grab y'all's tiny violins. Trick Daddy is in his feelings over Cat Williams. Oh, my career. I've been a nephew, a brother, a little cousin, a fan of Ricky Smiley. Cat Williams, your little pussy ass get on on, on, on a sharp show and just, and just get in your little bitch ass feeling and get in ways and you, you say all the type of shit you ain't supposed to say. See, there's a lot of shit about certain rap niggas I, I, I could say but I know it's some shit that I shouldn't say, so I don't say it, you know? I remember when the culture was, was, was switching over and a lot of double OGs and triple OGs and OGs to the game didn't understand it. And they, they, they were saying shit about it. But me, I, I, I you know, I, I eased up and I, and I nitpick and I, and I choose what parts of it not to understand, what part of it not to respect, and what part of it it was hard to accept, right? That's when I realized nothing stays the same. Everything changes. You said some shit about the Bernie Jenkins thing. I was a fan of the Bernie Jenkins before that movie ever came out. You said some slick shit about me in one of your stand up, um, in one of your stand up, you was, you was being sarcastic saying that if Trick Daddy can own a restaurant, you can do anything. Look, well. <laughs> He's really mad. Nigga, you 
bull daddy looking ass fuck nigga. Keep my name out your mouth. I'm not no comedian. I'm a street nigga first, okay? Keep my name out your mouth, bitch ass nigga. Keep Ricky Smiley name out your mouth. Keep all OG's name out your mouth. If you don't like a person, if you don't like a person, you don't say it. I told people that I didn't think you was funny. I ain't never said I didn't like you. And I'm glad I didn't never say I didn't like you because me, by me not thinking you were funny, I actually saw you one day and I was laughing my ass off. I was crying laughing one day. Remember that little boy put you in the headlock? I was crying fucking laughing that day, nigga. Bitch ass nigga, you, you scary curls, half perm wearing ass nigga. Stop, man, listen man, stop talking about other niggas to be relevant in the game, the trend. Cause you was trending today and I'm gonna be trending tomorrow on your bitch ass. And I'm with whatever you with, nigga. And every nigga, every comedian, everybody who you told a story got, got more money than me and you. You on my level, bitch ass nigga. Ha <laughs> ha. The joke on you, bitch ass nigga. All them niggas is full. All them niggas is full. You ain't got no churn. You ain't you ain't never trying to get pregnant. Bull dagging ass nigga. Always talking about a bitch. You you sit up there, you talking all this shit about it. Men and acting and can come in. Dog, you ain't funny. You're a fucking joke. Stop making fun of other niggas. Black folk, we have to stop belittling our brothers and sisters to get a platform, to get shares, to get likes, to get views, to trend. We have to stop. We got to stop. All my life. Okay, get your ass off. <laughs> He is really child. Dear, near, 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 near. He is really in his feelings. My thing is, first of all, it was a joke, right? He's a comedian. He tells jokes. But second of all, you are on Love and Hip Hop, Trick Daddy, okay? And your best friend, Trina, how many times has she got on Love and Hip Hop and screamed about how people were beneath her and, you know, how people weren't shit? You have cussed people out on Love and Hip Hop. You have gone back and forth with folks. So you have degraded and went in on other black people too, okay? So he's no different. How soon people forget. Remember Trina was going off on that girl saying that the little girl was beneath her and all this goofy shit? At the end of the day, it's funny how so many people are in their feelings because Cat Williams is speaking his truth. When all these other people went on Club Shay Shay and spoke their truth, you know what I'm saying? We let them rock. But see, they weren't expecting Cat Williams to, you know, go onto a podcast and just basically spill the tea. And now they're all upset. Now they're, you know, they're all in their feelings. And guess what? I'm here for it. I don't, I don't feel bad. I'm here for it. Because at the end of the day, you know, the truth needs to be told. And if Trick is mad, that's probably because there's a little bit of truth in the comedy. And that's why he's in his feelings. So I just thought that was funny that he was like just so upset and Ricky Smiley's my friend and you bitch ass and this, this and that. So I thought the whole back and forth was just very, very entertaining to me because literally he involved himself. Like he didn't bring him up during the whole Club Shay Shay interview. I don't recall him talking about Trick. So the only thing I could find that correlated with Trick getting mad was the fact that Cat Williams was talking about Ricky Smiley and the fact that he had said that joke about him a few years ago. So he's basically inserting himself, let Ricky Smiley hold his own nuts. He's a grown man, he's a comedian. Let Ricky Smiley, you know what I'm saying, get up on his show and roast, you know, Cat Williams and address him and everything else. You know, he shouldn't need no backup. He's a grown ass man. So I find the whole situation just funny. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.